Finance from ABSA, going off the beaten track to find solutions. The eighth and final race of the 2008 ABSA Opera Championship, the RFS McCulley's 400 continues right here on Supersport. And once a quick, fast and intense burst like that has been completed, the cars and the drivers need attention again. Foster was a happy camper. Look, we had a good um, position on the road. We started third on the road, so uh, there was a bit of a track ahead of us, which I think was to our advantage. Um, we had a good run. We, we really had a good run. Um, Rafi was brilliant. He read the road well. Um, we attacked. We went as, 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 as fast as I, I thought that we could because off the racing line, there were dangers. There were rocks, and if you, if you got a bit out of shape, you were going to either get a puncture or damage your car in some way. So. We went as fast as we could, um, but keeping it pretty clean. In other words, normal procedure for Danka. Toyota too were pleased. It was a very good result for us. Um, I think the, the drags have showed that the Nissans do have a little bit more power than what we do in the straight lines. And uh, being so fast here at this off-road event, I think that the, the Nissans perhaps took their time from us. Uh, it was down the long straights. But nevertheless, on the whole, I think uh, we kept it nice and clean, had a clean run and uh, had quite a good result to finish second. And all the teams had praise for the super production car class or SP category. The series itself is fantastic. I mean, the formula's working, this SP is unbelievable. Uh, just coming down to the last race and three of us can win it. So it's, it's good, it's good for the formula and it's good for off-road, you know? So uh, it's a pity about the, that it's, it's such high speed here because uh, both Hannes and us, we had a puncher in the, flat, in the time trial, so uh, with it, if it doesn't rain tomorrow, we've got a problem. For the motorite camp, the speed is definitely there. Now, for the consistency and good luck. You know, we've qualified, I think, uh, fastest the last few races. So now, now we never had a problem with pace. I think we just had a little bit of bad luck this year. Um, but looking back over the last four years, we had an incredible amount of good luck. So we've written the year off. I'm almost happy that it is the end of the year. Um, yeah, I'm happy that we brought in uh, first overall for tomorrow morning, just to show that we still have a little bit of pace. And um, we'll try and go for the win tomorrow. Obviously, go out to the end of the year, is, uh, winning the last race. But um, it was quite an exciting day for us so far with the uh, little run down the drag strip. It was quite exciting. And um, the time trial was very quick, super, super high speed stuff. So um, quite enjoy that. And it suited the, uh, the two wheel drive, the, the specials. I think we beat the Buckies uh, here again. So they'll make for an interesting race tomorrow. Bertolt wasn't unhappy either, but felt he could have been a little faster. Yeah, not bad considering the circumstances. We got held up in Shamir's dust, unfortunately, which lost us about 15 seconds. And uh, we're second on the road for tomorrow morning. So it should be a good run for the Atlas Copco team. And that seemed to be the general verdict. Fast all-out racing without too many technical challenges. As the last racing day of the 2008 season dawned, the smiles belied the tension in the air. There were six championship titles up for grabs and a lot to play for. And not only that, drivers and teams were mindful of the end-of-the-year negotiations between sponsors and teams and wanted to finish off the year on a high note. For Foss, it was a good night's rest after a quick run. He was pleased. Yeah, I am. I'm very pleased. The, the car was brilliant yesterday. Uh, we had a really good run. Um, the terrain, I think, suits, suits our, our type of setup. So I'm hoping we can convert it to a, a good result today. Now, being first on the road, will that be a big advantage, Duncan? Um, yeah, today it will. There's, there's no wind, uh, and we're we ahead of all the, 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 the buckies. So there, and there's, there's uh, about six or seven of them that are in a really uh, close, they're close to each other, so, and we're a little bit ahead of them. So I'm just hoping we can get a, a gap and not have any trouble. Yeah, it's good to be um, in Joburg for a race, you know, home, home race. So we've got full support from the whole team. All the kids and family are here. Um, obviously, it makes it a whole lot more fun. Yeah. No pressure on you today at all? Yeah, I suppose the only advantage of not being in the championship race is that there's no pressure. I didn't lie in bed last night tossing and turning about strategy. We, you know, we, we had to win the race. We're trying to win the last race. We managed to do it at uh, the previous event. So it's the only thing we can really get out of the end of the year. You know, unfortunately, we've had some bad luck. So uh, it's quite simple. We're going to go for it. We're going to go for the win. And that's it. With race strategies drawn up, cars ready and prepared, drivers and navigators rested and raring to go, it was all systems go and all hands on deck as the last race of the 2008 Absa off-road season finally hit the road. And Hutchison flew away to a quick start as he led the field away.
The two-time champion certainly had a few scores to settle and was desperate to end off the season on a high note after starting off with a burnt-out wreck of a car in the Western Cape. And while we see our first chopper shots, thanks to Connie Pinard for the use of his chopper, couldn't have done it without you. We certainly could have. Now Berthold and Vermeulen started six seconds later with the Suvalts next, but the last mentioned were trying to win the championship while the two cars in front of them were trying to win the race. A little like losing the battle but winning the war. flying on the ground and Foss was clearly taking it easy from the off. He nursed the Nissan over the first jump and was obviously not in a mood to take any chances early on. The defending national champion is a man who judges things well and is not apt to make huge mistakes. The racing line on this route demanded just that. Stick to it or suffer the consequences. What was also encouraging to see was that thousands of spectators had descended on the Krugersdorf venue and were having a fine time watching the passing parade. Foss was, though, immediately slowed up by the dust of the cars ahead of him. And the specials can certainly churn it up. One of those turning it up at the front was Hutchison and Bergman, who were in a mean mood early on and trying to break the imaginary string stretching back to the rest of the chasers. The Atlas Copco was one of those, and Bertelt and Vermeulen were desperate to also finish off their season with another win. But the dust was tough for the specials. No windscreens there to keep it out of just about everything, and that includes the working parts of the engine. Meanwhile, the championship pace setters, Cully and Quinton Silvald, were settling down the car and the nerves. They were, after all, shooting for their first national crowd. Force with three wins in the season, tied at this stage with Robler, knew that the pressure was on and nothing less than a win would secure him a great shot at the championship, depending on the other title contenders and how things would work out for them. Matthews and Smith have made giant strides in the year 2008 and proved this year that they can run with the big dogs. Their car too has been reliable and it has certainly given them peace of mind to race hard. Total Motorsports' has Shamir Varayawa and his nav Siegfried Rousseau produced victories in the desert in Botswana over 1,000 k's and followed that with another win at Sun City. They were driving on lots of confidence. While Cronier and Birken moved by their teammate and had to play the cat and mouse game and wait for the right time to make another move. Hmm? Regent Racing's Michael Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson were fourth in the special vehicle battle but had high hopes of victory here as they've also been a crew that steadily improved throughout the racing year. And in the second Castrol Toyota, Fisser and the experienced navigator Badenhorst were making a good run back at their stablemate Cronier and then force up ahead. With the Micarin XL dealer teams De Brains having moved up a spot and wanting more of exactly the same. Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar experiencing fuel flow problems stalled their century property CR1 and a rather impatient John Moore and Leander Pinar gave it a gentlemanly two seconds and then started pushing. Oh well, someone has to do it and they finally got it underway. The Machali's dust was debilitating and no more than for the teams further back. Woolridge and Schultheimer were 17th on the road and wanted to make some headway very quickly. With a 51-year-old Krobler and Moore following their example, they were a long way back early on after their punches in the prologue. George and Sharon Barkhazen is yet another crew that have improved at a rate of knots and the Ruacon off-road racing squad were doing exactly the same thing here, right here in the northwest. And in the Class P battle for the championship, the Adenko crew of the Beside Notes had stated their intentions clearly. They'd moved by Thompson and Campbell and were staking their claim. For the Zamatans, it was pick a line, hold on and go, ready or not. More cars that came by, the worse the dust problem became. In Class B, Loader Brain and Rudy Britz had taken the lead, putting all the pressure on Jan Cry. 
And in the special vehicle A-Class Battle, the father and son combination, Nick and Ryan Harper, were getting their brand new Bat Spec 4 to listen to them. After a solid 70 kilometers of racing, the motorbike crew's bad luck continued as gearbox trouble saw them drop out of contention, with Pertolt and Vermeulen taking over at the head of affairs, and the Sawats keeping them within eye shot. Variawa and Brousseau were fourth, just about two minutes back. And the Class P leaders, the Bezada Notes, were poised to upset some of the big-name teams. They were up into 8th place. With the Harpers climbing 10 places to nudge into the top 10. Meanwhile, Johan and Werner Horn in the Malalani Toyota Land Cruiser were ninth in the SP Class Battle. And the Feltex Imperial Toyota with Mike Thompson and Brian Haviland aboard were solid if unspectacular early on, 10th in their class. Lovoskakny and Kharaba in Class D were hampered by the dust too. And there's a scary moment, going quickly and not knowing what's ahead. That's exactly where you misjudge things. And in Class E, things were steady as she goes. Fissa and Leroux clinched three early season wins, and since then, they've been defending. They had a 21 points worth of breathing space, just enough to relax. And the Transco lad, Diedrich and Danny Hutting, were applying just a bit of pressure behind them to make it interesting. But at the sharp end of the field for the production car battle, Foss and Pitchford were in control. The former track racing star was in control nicely and keeping two other former champions and title contenders, Woolrich and Kobler at bay with a superb start to the last race of the season. Cronier and Birkin were second and applying pressure. But as in the specials, it was a race within a race. One to win the championship, the other to win the inaugural RFS Mahali's 400 title. The Ford Dio were fifth, but were about to run into some serious problems, while Krobler was a long way back after those punctures. Ninth was Horn, and then tenth, Thompson and Haviland in their Toyota. Bertolt and Vermeulen in the Atlas Copco Porter now had all the pressure and had a gaggle of cars breathing down their exhaust pipes. And the Sawwalts were doing a great job of keeping them on us just up front, but far enough to keep the dust at bay. Force wasn't as lucky and had to take a slightly more cautious approach. There was very little wind, and the red Mahali's dust hung around like a bad smell. Matthews and Smith had piled on the speed and were contending for a podium place. That's what they had their minds set on, too. With a very clean-looking total motorsport porter with Variawa and Rousseau on board speeding by like a bullet train up into fourth in Class A. And as our camera panned back, the second-placed SP car skittled into view. Mockering and Chris Birkin and the Toyota had to keep in mind that they had a 42-point lead over Nissan in the manufacturer's trophy chase. Hutchison and Bergman battling their gearbox in the motorized bat just displayed more of their season, riddled with bad luck and technical mishaps. On the way now to the designated service point back at the Talton International Raceway, and Regent Racing's top challenger Michael Whitehouse and Matthew Carlson had driven a commendable first third of the race. Now, the crunch part was ahead. Moore and Pinar were driving like their car's name suggests. The Free Spirit Chevy engine car was on the way to an all-time high finish, showing up some big names in the process. Woolridge and Schultammer, meanwhile, had the Ford pointed in the right direction, but were battling only drive shaft problems. As for Grobler, no better way to see a master at work than to jump in the car with him and co-drive a moor. Almost a costly wrong slot there for a man chasing hard. The Micker and XL dealer team were still nicely on track for a solid top five finish in the Toyota Hilux. Fisser also right in the thick of the contest with a good drive in the Castrol Toyota. But straying off the racing line here can be absolutely fatal. 
The Parkisons again had the bit between their teeth and the Bloemfontein based Rokon team's SP entry was purring along very nicely. Thank you very much for asking. With the third Sassel Nissan Navara in the very capable hands of Ivar Tollefsen, the Norwegian, and Britt Quinn Evans solidly going through their paces. The Zoe Mattens were that insurmountable lead of 35 points for, for all intents and purposes, home and dry. But they were still looking out for win number five just to top off a great season. Talking about top off, Kuni Pinar, the man in the chopper, again topping it off for our great pictures. In class B, Jan Krai and Tito Furcht were setting the pace ahead of category leader Lo De Brain, who heads the championship by just 12 points. And in class P, it was the Beside Knights who were keeping their hand in with a very effective run on the way to DSP. On a well-marked route, De Brain was driving just behind Cry, keeping them in his sights, but not pushing. First finishing is the key to finishing first in this sport. Wise words. Thompson and Campbell were also still in with the shot, but had faded a little over the first half of the RFS Mahalis 400. With SB number 22 signalling that the Malalani men, the Horns, were on their way to a very good finish at the designated service point. And back in Class B, Bodo Bertolt had his Atlas Copco back running just outside the top four and going along very smoothly. Outgoing champion Cliff Weichelt and Nick Els in the N1 4x4 were plagued by a few early season problems. But here in the Michalisburg area, the Toyota was running like a dream. With Graham Leith and Mike Lawrenson in that very aggressive looking Ford Ranger in their first outing, hoping to score points for the team in the manufacturer's trophy chase. Taylor and Houghton were a model of consistency, but they were battling in two-wheel drive for the last 100 Ks of Loop 1. an easy thing to do and Taylor a master at it. The RFS men were in their element in their own race and the orange and black Toyota was up a fistful of places with Christian de Pluy driving very well. Fisser and LaRue were cruising along. Their sole aim was to get the Barbers band Toyota to the line in one piece. The first half of the call was almost done. The Dalmas couple Ramon and Moret beside note were just seven points adrift of second and were steadily applying the pressure to finish second in the championship chase. Back in the SB class, Kurvis von Tonda and Louis Weichelt were keeping the Unifreight Ford Ranger on the straight and narrow. But not long after this, they ran into trouble. Luckily, they did make it to DSP. The Faltex Imperial Toyota, with Tomset and Haviland in the cockpit, were inching their way up the order. Duploy and von Rensburg hit the bottom of this donga, with screamers blaring in their ears, as Johan von Standen and James Rousseau were battling to get a passing spot. And an impatient Kilnell and Dion de Kock and the Luke Zarko Truggy just behind them, trying to wiggle past as well. In Class E, the Huttings and the Trasco Hilux had reclaimed the lead and were pulling away gradually. With Keith de Toy and Johan Hoffman in their Ford Diesel Ranger, up into the best position they'd ever enjoyed in a national championship event. We are back right after this. Vehicle and asset fire.